to round up next. Uh, Jeremy Ben-Ami, president of J Street. Uh, Jeremy, it's great to have you on the show. Um, as we mentioned, Biden officials, the White House officials and others are worried this evening that an Israeli response to Iran's attack might trigger a wider war. And it's based on what they have seen in the past when Israel carried out this attack against the Iranian consulate in Damascus. The Americans did not have a heads up about it until the war planes were effectively up in the skies over Syria. How concerned are you that something like that could repeat itself? Or is this different because an attack directly on Iran would undoubtedly require Americans uh, acquiescence and perhaps even pre-approval? Well, it would be silly not to be worried, uh, given the track record. And so I think we should all be uh, extremely grateful for the leadership and the uh, clear messaging that is coming from President Biden and from the White House right now. The most important thing that needs to happen here is de-escalation uh, and ensuring that this doesn't spiral out of control. That would be not good for the United States and its interests. It wouldn't be good for the security of Israel, uh, and it wouldn't be good for any of the parties in the region. And so uh, we are all, I think, very, very deeply concerned by this government of Israel and some of the decisions that it has made over the course of these past six months. And uh, the strong messaging from President Biden saying, don't uh, do this, uh, is exceedingly important. Is the message uh, loud enough? Is it clear enough when you do not condition consequences on Israeli behavior? The, the simple words um, have been ignored so far. So why would this be any different? Because if you follow up on just some of the comments we've been hearing from several far-right members of the Israeli prime minister's ruling coalition who are calling for Israel to respond, Itamar bin Gavir, the national security minister, literally calling for a crushing attack today against Iran, um, it puts the Americans in a difficult position, right? It puts them in a situation where they can't just say words, there has to be consequences, but we haven't seen that yet. Well, this isn't just uh, consequences. This is whether or not the United States is going to be there to back Israel up. Uh, the questions related to Gaza aid and to the use of our equipment and uh, uh, arms in Gaza and on the West Bank and, and what the consequences should be for misusing them is, is of a different order uh, than if Israel were to ignore the entreaties and the clear lines from this administration and go ahead and do something, would the United States be there for Israel in the way that it was last night? Let's not forget, it wasn't simply the Israeli uh, air defenses that uh, held up last night. There was a coalition that involved Jordan and the UK and France and the United States that were all engaged. Uh, Israel cannot afford to risk uh, losing that international protection and that umbrella. That's not just a consequence. That is uh, a factor that, that Israel is going to have to take into account in whether or not it moves forward with something unwise and unstrategic. I want to get your thoughts about what has happened at the United Nations here for a moment. The United Nations Security Council, Russia uh, criticizing a double standard as states condemned Iran for its attacks yesterday, but then did nothing when they asked to meet after Israel's strike in Syria earlier this month. Is that a fair criticism as to how the United Nations um, has been operating, the international community has been operating, that you would need some kind of tougher international reactions to Israeli behavior when it violates uh, other countries' sovereignty, whether it be in Syria or Lebanon, in order for the criticism against Iran to be meaningful? Well, it's all a bit rich, of course, when it's Russia that right. is standing up right. and saying. <laughs> yeah. so, but, again, it, but again, it highlights the, the kind of hypocrisy on all these countries, right? Russia, which is occupying and violating international law, attacking Ukraine, uh, vetoing resolutions, also now saying for international law and order to be upheld in the case of Iran. Right. But to all of these situations, there is no military solution. Right. That's one of the things that I think is sometimes gets lost, that at the end of the day, if Israelis and Palestinians are going to ever find a way out of their conflict, there's only a political resolution. If Iran is going to be uh, held in check, then there has to be a diplomatic front that includes the Sunni Arab world together with Israel and the United States that stands up against it. The Iran nuclear agreement was the right approach to containing Iran's nuclear program. That was the correct way to keep the program in a box when Donald Trump and the more hawkish side of American foreign policy establishment 
took over control in, in 2017 and then tanked the Iran nuclear agreement, what happened? Iran's nuclear program races towards having a nuclear weapon. And so the only way out of all of these crises is through a diplomatic path and not uh, through a military solution. Now, let me ask you about something you know very well, and that is the dynamic that unfolds on Capitol Hill as a result of this with various aspects of uh, pro-Israel lobbies and organizations that come to its defense. We've seen unanimous condemnation of the Iran attack among uh, both Republicans and Democrats in the past 24 hours. But how does it complicate your efforts and what J Street tries to do? Well, on one hand, come to Israel's defense, but at the same time, chart a different course for how Israel's behaving in the region under this current Netanyahu administration? Well, the Republican Party never fails to, to miss an opportunity to turn these issues into a political wedge. Uh, they're trying to drive some divisions within the Democratic Party. They prefer that these issues be political footballs rather than serious policy issues. There is a bill that is in front of the House of Representatives that would provide aid not only to Israel, but to Ukraine and provide humanitarian assistance to the Palestinians. That bill has passed the Senate and it is just simply waiting uh, for Republicans to bring it to the floor and support it. So if the Republican Party wants to do something positive this week to actually help uh, Israel and Palestinians and uh, the war effort in Ukraine, uh, then it simply has to bring that bill to the floor and not introduce some new legislation that they design not to actually become American policy, but simply to create a political fissure in the Democratic Party. And that's not helpful. I was going to say, Jeremy, that is a tall order if you're expecting the Republicans to actually uh, do something other than just words at this point, not just on this issue, but as we've seen time and time again on many issues, Ukraine and even domestic policy. Uh, Jeremy Ben-Ami, it's always a pleasure. Thank you so much for your time. Greatly appreciate it.